Welcome back. This is Mike from Digital Offensive, and you're watching my path to OCP. So, the question of the hour, did I pass the OCP this time? Yes. Yes, I did. Um, I kind of knew Thursday that I definitely passed. I wanted to keep it under wraps until I actually received the official email uh, from um, Offensive Security just to make sure that there is no gotchas anywhere, things like that. Not that I thought there would be. Um, but it's like kind of saying, yeah, you did something and all of a sudden you find out it didn't work or you didn't get it. Um, I didn't want to kind of shoot myself in the foot or get my hopes up. Uh, on Thursday, I started my exam at 10 o'clock. Uh, I started off with some problems in the morning. Uh, my camera wasn't working with their stream, even though I can see myself, they couldn't see me, which definitely added a level of stress to the whole situation. I was worried that they were going to make me postpone my test. Um, the proctors were very nice and helpful throughout the process. Uh, we got through everything. We had to work around until the stream started working on their end. The one thing I would say is if you are a Mac user, even though you grant access through the web app that pops up on your screen, make sure you actually, uh, add access to in your security settings for access to the microphone and camera. So the stream works fine. Um, I don't know if that's what fixed it or didn't fix it um, because throughout the rest of the day it worked fine, but the next morning it stopped working again for them. And I don't know what happened at that point. Either way, uh, that process went pretty good after the initial uh, stress of it not working and me thinking that they were going to make me reschedule it, <clears throat> even though the guy kept saying, don't worry about it. Once I was in the exam, um, I did use the tool Auto Recon. Uh, I got to say... I have a love-hate love, it, love hate relationship with the tool. Um, I did not really get a lot of use of the tool before starting the exam. Uh, the night before, I ran a couple of tests just to see what the output would look like. I did not do any type of configuration of the tool, and I only used the MMAP portion of the tool, or the, the scanning portion of the tool. I don't want to say MMAP because it runs a couple of scanners. The one thing you need to realize about the tool is it's great for port and service detection, it does not go into actually enumerating the web applications, at least not in the configuration I had it in. Uh, I don't know if it does it in additional configurations. Uh, it's something I want to look into and really understand what I'm looking at and see how that tool can really play a role in future engagements, things like that. Um, the other thing about the tool is, unless there's some type of reporting functionality built into that tool, that's something I think definitely needs to be added to that tool. Uh, when you kick off that tool, you're going to get dumped a lot of text files and you're going to go through the text files. Now, I got to say the data in the text file is crazy amount of enumeration. Um, I I don't even know if I went through that much enumeration in the labs, uh, the level of details you get through that tool enumerating for you. And all it's really doing is running MMAP scripts and uh, Nikto and other scripts that you as a normal user can run manually. Um, so the one cool thing, uh, with the tool is inside the directory, it shows you all the commands it ran too. So you can actually learn how to do this manually as well, which I thought was very interesting. A after I went through, um, each enumeration process, I went back to see how they got that data and really understood what I was looking at. Uh, as I was saying earlier though, it doesn't run like GoBuster, Durbuster, any of those things like that. If you're doing web app enumeration, um, make sure that you are still using those tools. Um, that was key for me. So uh, enumeration wise, uh, that tool was great. I did still run my standard M maps. Uh, GoBuster is my go-to for uh, web enumeration. I did, uh, as I said in a previous video, I did modify my, my word list to remove uh, manual and manuals. Um, if you don't think that is needed, don't do it. But I'll tell you, before you get to the exam, find a box with uh, default install Apache and leave those two words in there and run your scan. See how long it takes to get come back. Uh, it kind of puts you in a, a little tar pit for a bit. So as I said earlier, I uh, took about eight, maybe eight hours, uh, maybe a little bit over eight hours to get 4.5 boxes. My buffer overflow took me longer than I expected it to. Uh, I kind of... I kind of thought I was going to go and ace it right away. It was the easiest easiest box for me the first time around. Uh, I just did a whole class on buffer overflows. Uh, I, I really feel confident in buffer overflows. For some reason, I can follow the whole stream. <clears throat> I was able to watch EIP and then the ESP, the control execution, everything. 
and it just wasn't working for some reason. Uh, I stepped back for a mo moment or two and all of a sudden I had a shell. <clears throat> I don't know what was going on. I restarted the box, tried again, it worked the first time. So only thing I can see there is just like in the last, make sure you're restarting your boxes as you think you need to. And then make sure you're documenting everything along the process there. Uh, after I had my buffer overflow, I uh, started going through all my uh, numeration data I had from Order Recon, from Durbuster. Um, I, did, I then went through and got each uh, other box, uh, compromising the low, uh, low point box next. And then basically from there, uh, getting user accounts or user level shells on the rest of the boxes and then coming back to those boxes and compromising them further. At about 8.30, 8.30ish, um, I sat down, did some dinner with my wife. Um, I spent a few more hours after that writing my report, uh, getting all updated. And one of the things I found helpful with the report was I used my previous report. I, I took a lot of time on my previous report because I was hoping that even though I knew it didn't pass, deep down I knew it didn't pass because I didn't have enough points, I thought maybe if I wrote a killer report, I'd have enough points. Um, I don't know what I was thinking, but either way, I didn't want to give up. I wanted to continue the report last time. So I wrote a really good report. So what I did there is I took my executive summary out of that report, uh, which saved me a lot of time. Uh, I modified it slightly, pasted it into my current report, and that saved me maybe a good hour of wordsmithing and double checking things. Got that done, uh, started documenting everything within my report. Uh, I would say about two to three hours later, I had all my details in there, all my screenshots in there. And what was really nice about still having time in the uh, exam was I was able to go back and make sure I had all the right screenshots and everything. And if I didn't have a screenshot, I still had time to go back and grab a screenshot instead of waiting until after exam to do that. Now that only works if you have that time to do it. Um, a lot of people use the full 24 hours. My first attempt, I was fighting into the last possible minute to get the uh, points needed to pass. This time, it just seemed to go much uh, faster for me. Uh, I think I was better prepared to get through it, so I had that time. I think what helped me this time was all the additional preparation I've done. So as of this moment, I've spent over 210 days uh, in the labs. I've compromised every single box in the public network in the labs. Well, 99.5% of the boxes in the public lab. I didn't get uh, a root shell on Ghost. Um, I did most of the admin network, most of the IT network. Uh, I didn't touch the uh, dev network, but I did get through a lot of the networks and a lot of the boxes in the labs. I did all the lab assignments and exercises this time, which I didn't do last time. Um, I found that a lot of stuff that's in your book ties directly to the lab. So if you're skipping the book and you're just going hacking, you're going to lose a lot of value in this certification or this uh, course. I also spend a lot of time in Hack the Box, uh, gained the rank of guru over there, doing 40 plus boxes over there, uh, several boxes a week sometimes just to keep my rank going. Uh, I also have looked, done a lot of stuff over on Vone Hub. So altogether, I think in the last, let's say the last 100 to 150 days, I've probably done 120 plus boxes, um, compromising them from user to root. Um, some of them being a mixture of the labs, the hack the box, the Vuln, uh, Vuln Hub, and things like that. So I, I did spend a lot of time uh, this time around preparing for this. Not that I didn't spend a lot of time the first time, but I think maybe some of this additional knowledge I picked up on the way through some of these other sites, such as Hack the Box and Bone Hub and things like that, have definitely added a lot of value to um, this course as well, doing that additional research. And that's one of the things you need to know, note about this certification is they provide you a certain amount of information and they don't provide you great in depth all the time. But it's up to you being that pen tester, that the hacker, the one that has that mindset to dig deeper, to go read more about these things, uh, understand them better, and how you can use them. So I think that's what really made me successful this time around. And of course, all the support and uh, help uh, from uh, everyone out there. Like if I had a question, I was able to ask someone, hey, by the way, how, how would you go about doing this type of attack? Um, I bounced a lot of ideas off some other team members, things like that, as I got stuck on things, or I basically just kept reading. Um, 
if I got stuck on a topic, I would go in there and read about that topic, fully understand the topic, and then come back and do some exploitation. Uh, if that didn't work, I would go to the next uh, article or the next video or whatnot until I fully understood what was going on and was able to accomplish it. But the biggest thing is making sure you're going into the, this exam prepared um, to be successful, right? I know there's people out there that can basically go zero to hero somehow and pass this exam. Um, I don't know how they do it. Uh, I've known pen testers that have been in the field for 15 plus years that fell at the first attempt. So that being said, um, just make sure that you're prepared. Uh, if you can't Google, if you can't answer simple questions, you're not going to be ready for this exam uh, or this course in general. There's a lot of research that needs to be done by you as the individual. And there's going to be a lot of hair pulling as well along that path. As I said, this time around, I spent quite a bit of time getting through everything and then finally sitting in the exam. And even up to the day exam, I was still super nervous, um, hoping that I would be able to pass it this time around. Knowing that I had enough information and skills to do so, but still knowing that this was the exam, a very challenging exam that was going to push you for 24 plus hours to get through and pass. Uh, once I was done creating the report, it was about maybe 12, 30, 1 o'clock uh, my time. Uh, I spent a little more time on the last box trying to get admin. I knew the path. Um, and now hindsight being 2020, I, I think if I went to bed a little bit earlier or if I kind of reset myself at that point, I might have had that last uh, admin as well. Um, it was in the last few minutes the next morning when I woke up that I finally was on the right path. I just ran out of time to finish executing it. Um, so I went to bed maybe around 2 o'clock, 1.30, 2 o'clock, give or take. Slept a few hours, woke up, uh, made breakfast for the family, and then sat back down with about three hours remaining. Um, I can tell you I still wasn't fully clear-headed. Um, definitely did not get enough sleep. But I sat back down, uh, started trying to reattack the vector, and about maybe 30 minutes before the end, I, I did realize I had something wrong with what I was doing. I tried to fix it. I just ran out of time. Um, the, the proctor uh, messaged me and said, hey, your exam's about to end. You can disconnect from the camera. And at that point, um, you can see the authentication uh, uh, D-off gets sent to the VPN, which kicks you off the VPN. Uh, and then basically your exam's over at that point. Altogether, I think it was a, a great experience. Um, I am more than thrilled that I passed this uh, this time. It's definitely a big... Uh, after after that morning, I did take uh, some more time to look over my report, proofread it again, uh, go back and add some additional details just to make sure that I had enough details in the report that there was no question about anything. And then... When I was all done, I submitted the report through the proper mechanism on their uh, on their documentation, which I can tell you that it was almost as stressful as taking the exam itself to make sure that you did everything right, that uh, it wasn't going to be order rejected and you were going to fail because of how you submit your report. I did also do the lab, so I, I did send in the lab report with my report. So I believe all together. Um, and this is guessing at the point point systems um, because it's a little hard to tell how many points you get for a user versus uh, the full compromise. Um, but if you go through the math, I had 25 for the buffer overflow, 10 for the low privilege. Uh, I got both of the other 20. So that's 40, 50, 75 right there. I got a user on the last box, which could be 10 points there. So you're looking at about 85 plus my lab, which would be 90 points, give or take. The thing is, you, you'll never know. They don't tell you what you got point-wise, things like that. Just like the CISP, you never know what points you get in the CISP. You just know you pass or fail. And when people ask me, do you really care about that? My my opinion on that is, it's like a doctor in medical school. It doesn't matter where you graduate in, in your class, you're still called a doctor at the end. Um, just maybe you need to study a little bit more. <laughs> uh, or maybe you shouldn't be uh, high on the list of people uh, that people are coming to see you. But either way, um, I can tell you that this would not be possible with a lot of help from my family and my friends. Uh, my wife being very um, supportive throughout the whole process. 
uh, helping a lot with the kids, taking on the extra load. Uh, all my friends over at the OSP study group, all the admins there, uh, all my subscribers to keep me motivated. Uh, thank you all. Yeah, so that is it. I just want to give everyone a, a thanks for being supportive, subscribing to my channel. Um, coming, uh, coming up now on the channel, since my OSP is kind of over, I'm going to be focusing on my GX pen. Uh, I'll have some videos up about that. I'm going to continue making security videos. I do have a couple other topics in mind. If you guys have any topics, please let me know um, down below. Uh, I do like making these videos. I do plan to continue making some videos around VulnHub and things like that. But my main focus for the next month or two is going to be around the GX Pen. Uh, I sit for that exam on June 14th, which is another big exam. Uh, once that's done, I think I'm done with crazy exams for the year. Uh, I do need to choose my next certification come October. Uh, let my boss know what I'm interested in doing. So I'm going to keep an eye on the new advanced web that um, Offensive Security is offering to see how that pans out uh, and then how does that apply to my career. I do a lot of web apps and a lot of mobile testing right now, along with network infrastructure and red teaming. So all these certifications fall well within the realm of what I do. It's just a matter of which ones are going to give me that edge um, to keep uh, on the top end of my game for my, my current position. So if you like these videos, I know this one's not very technical at all. It's more just, hey, thank you everyone for subscribing, uh, keeping me motivated, and just letting you guys know that I did pass. Uh, just make sure you guys click the subscribe button and click the bell to be notified when new videos come out. And look forward to seeing you guys at my next video. Have a good day.